And now look over here, it says lean to the left. Didn't you notice that contradiction? It's the word of the bike, it knows, it understands its own contradiction. What? Sir, I've ridden a bike. I don't know what's going on here, but I can tell you that whoever wrote this book does not want you to be able to ride a bike. And this big, heated, emotional argument ensues. Now, had you never ridden a bike, you wouldn't be able to look at that book and know what the lies are. It would be impossible for you to tell. So you say to the person, hey, look, look, here's a bike over here. You see? Yeah, they exist. You don't need to read about them. They exist. They've just been hiding them from you. This is a real bike right here. Here, get on. No, no, no. Just trust me. Get on the bike here. Put your legs over. And then you give them a push. And they try to ride. And they lean all the way to the left. And they fall. And now they're scared. The bike hates me. It, I'm, I, I must repent. No, 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 no. Sir, you're copying the book. And the book doesn't want you to know how to ride the bike. The bike wrote this but Listen, just try it again. You put them on the bike. Give them a little push. And they fall again. And you say, watch me. And you get on the bike. And you're riding all over the place. And so now that they see you riding the bike, you've got their attention. You've got their attention because they've been reading about a bike and how to ride it their whole lives. And they can't understand why they can't ride it and you can. Maybe they think there's something wrong with them or something wrong with you. Well, that's not a real bike then. Yes, sir, it is. It's a real bike. Just try it again. And so you put them on the bike and you say, let go of the book. Trust yourself. Listen, you won't believe this, but you were designed to ride that bike. That's your very design, and the book is keeping you from knowing that you naturally know how to ride it. Forget the rigidity of this book. Trust your instinct, and try it again. So you put them on this bike, and they make it 20 feet before they fall. Oh my God, I did it! That was fun! Yeah, that's your design. Do you know that as a bike rider, that's what you enjoy the most? Did you feel controlled when you were riding that bike, or did you feel more free than you've ever felt in your life? And now, of course, the authors of the book and the people that promote the book get pretty angry when they find out about this. You're blowing their whole scam out of the water. That's no good to them, right? Because you see evidence of the bike around, but you've never ridden one, they need to create that book to include the evidence, but tear you away from it at the same time. Well, this is a metaphor, of course, and I can tell you something about Christ. He was a bike rider, and he rode the bike. And he was trying to get all of you to ride the bike. Instead, they're trying to get you to ride him. Understand my meaning. He was a bike rider trying to get everybody else who were naturally bike riders to ride the bike. And now they're trying to get you to ride him. Let me ask you something. Did Christ feel like he needed to wear a specific outfit? in order to be credible? Oh, that's right. No, he didn't. What book was this man regurgitating from? Oh, that's right. No book. He didn't need a book about riding bikes because he already knew how to do it.
They're giving it a name and a procedure and a ritual called Christianity. What name did he give it? Oh, that's right. No name. You see, in the Bible, they even tell you, watch out for people who give long, extended sermons for praise and their outer persona. It's right in there. But with mind control, which is what religion is, people cannot allow themselves to see the direct contradictions. I mean, the Old Testament is absolute crap. It's pure mind control. I mean, come on, man. Uh, the shelf, uh, the table was three cubits high and two cubits wide. and that, that, It's all sacred geometry. It's crap. What does that have to do, descriptions like that, and family lineage have to do with the spirit? Not one thing. Not one. It's all channeled. The parables, you have to understand that the knowledge he had is non-translatable. In other words, if you read a book about riding a bike, you can read it all you want. You can memorize it forwards and backwards and dedicate your life to that book. Someone puts you on a bike, you're going to fall. Period. Reading a book about riding a bike is not the same as intuitively riding a bike. And they know that. They know that all too well, you see, because Satan controls religion. And it loves it. It loves that you're memorizing this book on how to ride a bike. Do you understand? That's Satan's preference. It prefers that because at the right moment, for everybody who's memorized that book about riding bikes, Satan will put you on that bike and you're going to fall in the crucial time because you've depended upon a fraudulent book about bike riding when the irony is you're naturally a bike rider it's like a, a coach we've all seen this where you have a player with natural talent on some sports team and you get some bullshit coach that comes and tries to force the player with natural ability to follow his structure the coach can't play, the coach doesn't have one ounce of the natural ability of the player, but yet the coach with his position of authority over the player forces the player to acclimate to his philosophy based upon no talent whatsoever, and then the player screws up. The player becomes mechanical and rigid and can't perform the same way. Parables are metaphors, okay, and they're meant to draw upon some sort of experience you've had to tune your mind to an understanding outside of descriptive words. For example, um, it's kind of like if I went up to a basketball team and I said to the players, guys, it's like the feeling you get when you spin a basketball on your finger. You know, the feeling that you get when it's stabilized and you just got it. You just know it. You, you've got it going. That type of feeling. And the ones who can spin a basketball on their fingers say, yeah, yeah, I get that. Makes sense why I've drawn upon a feeling that you cannot translate into words. I cannot describe it with words. I can attempt to do so, but it's not the same thing as accomplishing spinning a ball on your finger. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to do it. They say, yeah, I get that. Of course they get it because they've done it, therefore the parable has meaning. If they haven't done it, it will have no meaning. They'll hear and understand the same words I used and guess, but they can only guess because they've not done it. So they write that down. Well, that makes sense when I'm trying to explain whatever. Then imagine 2,000...